from Arthur's Really Helpful Bedtime Stories. The Emperor's New Clothes Long ago, there was an emperor who loved to wear beautiful clothes. He wore a different outfit to every meal and rarely wore the same thing twice. One day, two visitors came to the emperor's palace. They told everyone they were weavers. We weave the best cloth, said one called the brain. Pure fiber, organically grown. Our cloth is so fine, said the other, whose name was Arthur, that it is invisible to foolish people. When the emperor heard this, he invited the two weavers to make him some clothes. The weavers agreed. We will need a nice place to work, said Arthur. No distractions like pesky little sisters and plenty of snacks. We must also have gold thread and the finest silk, the brain added. Our designs depend upon it. Yes, yes, said the emperor, whatever you want. He gave the weavers a large room with a view of the garden. Every day, whenever anyone came by, they sat before their loom, pretending to weave. The rest of the time, they ate and slept and played games. As for the silk and gold thread, they hid them under the bed. After a week, the curious emperor sent his prime minister to see them. Our work is going very well, the weavers told her. Come in and see for yourself. They pointed to the loom. The prime minister opened her eyes wide. She rubbed them twice. It didn't help. She still saw no cloth. Does this mean I'm foolish? She thought to herself. How terrible. Nobody must find out. Do you like the colors? asked Arthur. Dramatic, aren't they? said the brain. The prime minister sighed. I've never seen anything like them, she admitted, and told the emperor the same thing. When another week had passed, the curious emperor sent the Lord Chamberlain for a peek. Come in, the weavers told him. Take a good look. The Lord Chamberlain stared and stared. Like the prime minister, he couldn't see a thing. Am I foolish, he thought. Oh dear, no one must find out. So what do you think, asked Arthur. Pretty amazing, huh? Oh my, said the Lord Chamberlain. It's hard to put into words but I'm certainly glad everything is going so well. And that's what he told the emperor. After a third week had passed, the emperor himself came to see the cloth. He was escorted by both the prime minister and the Lord Chamberlain. You've arrived at a critical moment, said the brain. As you will see, this pot is rather tricky. As their guests watched, the weavers continued with their work. First, they pretended to take the cloth off the loom. Then they pretended to cut it into pieces. Finally, they pretended to sew the pieces together. The emperor coughed <coughs> to hide his confusion. He could see no cloth at all. Is anything wrong, your majesty? asked the brain. No, no, said the emperor. Your work simply took my breath away. I couldn't be happier. He paused. There's to be a parade tomorrow. Will the clothes be ready by then? We will do our best, Arthur said. Keep those snacks coming. The next morning, the emperor arrived to get dressed. The weavers lifted their arms as though clothing were draped over them. Arthur held one arm out in front of him. These are the royal pants, he said. The brain held out both arms. And this is the royal robe. Ah, said the emperor. The clothing is very light, the brain went on. You will almost feel as though you were wearing nothing at all. 
The weavers pretended to lift each piece of clothing and place it on the emperor. When they were done, they stood back and clapped their hands. What style, cried Arthur. What grace, agreed the brain. What a surprise, said the emperor. He looked hard in the mirror and sighed. <sighs> the emperor led the parade up and down the city streets. In all the commotion, nobody noticed the two weavers leaving by the back gate with a sack filled with royal snacks. Everyone knew the story of the emperor's new clothes and how only foolish people couldn't see them. So they all spoke up quickly. Did you ever see such a robe? What colors? The emperor never looked better. One little girl, though, was not so impressed. She looked at the emperor and laughed. <laughs> but he doesn't have anything on, she cried. As if a spell had been broken, the crowd began to laugh, too. She's right, isn't she? He isn't wearing a thing. He has nothing on at all. The emperor bit his lip and blushed right down to his toes. He knew they were right, but he wasn't going to admit it. He kept his head high as the laughter followed him all the way through town and back to the palace. And we'll go on and read D.W. and the Three Bears next week. Thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. As Tigger says, ta-ta for now.